All right, that was Lost by Corrupted. Um, yeah. I got some new guests for you tonight. Who do I got? So I got the bassist slash singer, vocalist for Funeral Sutra, and I got the uh, the guitarist as well. That's me. Yes. So if you hear an Australian <laughs> accent, that would be the guitarist, and if you hear an American accent, that would be the vocalist. Yeah. Well, let, let's just say North American and uh, leave, yeah. leave it at that. <laughs> oh man, man, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's right, Canadian. Whoops. Taking offense from that? No, no, no. I, I would <laughs> not mind if you do take offense to that. That's no problem. <laughs> no, it's not like it's not like calling an Australian a, a New Zealander. So I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Sorry about that. That's true. Yeah. Well, that's like Tasmania down there, anyway. So. The last episode I had Rich from Dark Corpse. Mm -hmm. Um, I was debating. You know, who am I going to put first? I'm going to put Rich first. I'm going to put you guys first. But he got he put you guys over. And um, he, he talked about you, and he, he, he really built you up. So I thought, all right, we'll put him first, and then Funeral Sutra next. So with that, what are the next two songs? All right. So, we, um, so we've just played Corrupted, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I'm, um, I sort of come from a pretty punky background, you know. Um, I'm not a, as much of a metalhead as the... The, uh, the bass player or the uh, drummer in the band and, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess, you know, bands like uh, Corrupted and, um, you know, some of the other hardcore bands in Japan, that's probably more where I came from, uh, you know, and I mean, that last Corrupted song, that's a that's a new one that uh, came out and I hadn't, um, mm. hadn't actually heard that, it sort of slid through the radar and someone put me back onto it, but uh, That's a good yeah. point, that's a really good point. Yeah, holy hell, that's it's fucking heavy, and um, you know, it just sort of just reinforces the fact that like some of these bands that I used to listen to, like back in the day, like bands like Corrupted and you know Tragedy and His Hero's Gone and all these kind of punky bands, you know, they they still are really really heavy for me, and you know, still love listening to that stuff a lot. Um, the next one I've got. Uh, we've got Dark Corpse going nowhere. Um, you know, we played a lot with Dark Corpse back in the day when Rich was uh, in Japan, and you know, we had a we had a blast playing with those guys. They were, um, you know, super friendly, just really cool guys to hang out with. And I always remember going nowhere. I always remember that sort of searing guitar riff at the start. So, yeah, play it away. <laughs> All right. And then after Dark Corpse, we got some Coal Hall. Well, uh, <laughs> this kind is a little bit beyond me, man. Uh, yeah, I know. This one's, I can't read that anyway. But, yeah. um, no, I mean, Coal Hall is, uh, you know, another band full of friends. You know, I mean, we've been playing with these guys for a long time. Um, you know, we used to play in a band together with the guitarist um, a long time ago. Um, and we'll play one of those tracks later, but, um, you know, we're, we're tight with those guys. They're, um, they're our friends, you know, and they'll be our friends for a long time. And, you know, they're a really hardworking band and, you know, we always, uh, I've got a lot of respect for them, you know, as, for what they do as musicians and, uh, as people, you know, they're really, uh, they're really great, um, guys to hang out with. And yeah, this is probably one of my favorite songs that they've got I think I think they've probably released I don't know how many albums have they released now Man. at least three I mean they did the most recent one Regan on uh, Osmos which is just a phenomenal album uh, and then the one before that I think had just been released on uh, by Daymare in Japan mm -hmm. and then they had a couple of self released ones before that but yeah, I mean, just a phenomenal, as you said, very hardworking band, and very uh, sincere in what they do. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of those albums they did before, I mean, they probably, I think they re-recorded a lot of songs so many times now that, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, uh, they're craftsmen, you know, they really, uh, they take pride in getting things right and doing it the way it's supposed to be done. So, you know, I'm, I'm all down for that. And, uh, you know, what you listen to, too, and what you hear is uh, craftsmanship, you know, in their songwriting. Yeah, yeah and as as he said, I mean, they're they're just really, really sweet dudes. I mean, same with the guys from Dark Corpse. Uh, like, 
you know, both of these bands are just amazing people at a human level as well as, as musicianship. And that's one of the really cool things about playing music here. It's just like the quality of people that you get to meet in band. And it's just really, uh, it's really uh, fantastic. Except you, Tom Smith, you're a dick. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, but all right, so we got uh, Dark Corpse Going Nowhere and Koha. Again, Tom Smith, kidding. Koha, <laughs> <laughs> you're up next. All right, go.
All right, so that was Dark Corpse going nowhere and Kohal. Something, 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 something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you guys just had a show last night, right? Correct. Where at? Uh, this was in Nakano Heavy Six Zero. You know, for the life of me, man, I can't remember what that place looks like. I'm sure I missed the show last night. Yeah, it's, um, I think I'd only been there once before. It's a, it's, it's a little bit pokey in there, but, uh, yeah, it was a good show. I mean, it was, um, it was a solid lineup. It was sort of booked and arranged by, um, our dear friend Makoto from Funeral Moth. Huh. Um, you know, it was a good, uh, it was a good lineup. It was us, Funeral Moth, uh, Ooze Pass. And uh, right. uh, lifeblood, lifeblood, yeah. And those guys were doing their uh, their album release, which was um, which was good because I think we got to hear uh, hear a bit of that um, last night. They played through a lot of the album, I think. Um, but yeah, it was a good turnout. Yeah, good fun. You know, talking about the band you just played with. Mm. I played with you, and we played with Lifeblood at the same time. You guys played with a lot of bands. Mm, yeah. You guys have been around for, for, for a bit of time. Oh, yeah, about three and a half, four years. Yeah. Uh, what could you tell me? What could you tell me about your history? Mm. <laughs> what came first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. Yeah, no, um... Yeah, I mean, Paul and I, you know, we've known each other for a long time. Um, you know, we've been uh, playing music together for a long time as well. Um, you know, we were playing hardcore music um, back in the day in Japan when we first met. And, you know, we kind of, I guess the band went through various, um, you know, changes and different members and, you know, it was... It was good fun, you know. It was uh, it was a wild ride back in those days. Um, you guys, to, um, yeah. And then Paul, you know, he moved back to Canada. He had a stint back in Canada for a couple of years, and then following that, uh, um, upon his return, he sort of reached out to me again, and you know, we sort of decided to start a new band, and this is what uh, what we're doing now. So, yeah, I'm, I mean. Friendships, music, I mean, these things are really important, you know, and they kind of connect, um, you know, when there is that connection, both in friendship and in music, it's, it's, it's really easy to do, you know, it's not, uh, it's not hard, you know, it's not like a kind of challenge because we've been in, you know, bands before with sometimes guys you don't really like or, you know, there's personality issues and things like that. But, um, you know, working with, uh, you know, my previous band, Black Line Fever and, uh, and Funeral Sutra too. It's, you know, it's just a joy, you know, it's good fun. Guys, you can hang out and, you know, have a drink with and, you know, you play music together as well. It's, it's good stuff. It's the way it has to be for me. Yeah. And I guess, as Jordan said earlier, you know, he comes from a more of the hardcore side of the spectrum, whereas I'm more of, you know, like secure blooded metal guy, but, uh, you know, if you were to draw a Venn diagram of our musical taste, the, the you know the joint part in the middle would, you know, be bands like Tragedy and His Hero Is Gone and Uranus and One Eyed God Prophecy and From Ashes Rise, like on the you know bands like that on the hardcore side. But then on the metal side, like, like just things like old, you know, a combination of like Old Slayer and, and Old Motorhead and old Metallica and like that kind of old thrash, thrashier stuff. But then also a lot of the more recent black metal, like we both love Burzum. Love Leviathan, uh, bands like that. And so we, when we started this project, there was just a real desire to try and find the, the unifying theory across all of those different types of bands that we're really, really passionate about. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're still finding that sound that for us is the absolute best thing that we can do that kind of tries to get to the level of our influences. But, uh, you know, that's certainly what we're trying to do. Right yeah, I mean, I uh, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's for us. It's uh, you know, we're always searching this stuff. You know, it's it's not like we're just sticking to one genre. I guess. I mean, we kind of uh, you know, we know what we want to do. Um, 
when we write a song, I guess. But um, you know, sometimes the way it turns out is kind of different to what we uh, what we imagine. Sometimes, you know, and um, you know, we're not we're not opposed to uh, things sort of changing in different directions if through the songwriting process I think you know we're kind of open to experimenting and you know pushing ourselves as musicians a bit as well when we can so you know that's what it's all about you know I, I come up with all these little bullshit questions that I ask people or that I, I think maybe I should ask people in case they don't talk <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna throw that list out right now and uh, yeah so you guys talk well <laughs> all right um one of the things you said is you you played in black light black line fever excuse me um yeah. that's coincidentally the n name of the band for the next song i don't know how that got there but uh <laughs> black line fever godspeed follow up by sigh pale monument yeah i think uh paul you selected the uh Psy song but um yeah uh, I mean, yes, you know, Psy is an interesting band. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Mirai, I've never, never, you know, met him personally, so I can't speak to, you know, to him as a person, but, uh, you know, I mean, he's globally respected within the metal scene. And I remember, you know, listening to bands like Necrophagia a long time ago and seeing this guy, like, who's this, you know, Mirai guy playing keyboard for Necrophagia and then kind of figuring out that he was the same guy from Psy. And I remember, like, the album all from Scorn Defeat from, like, I don't know, about 20 years ago in the record store, looking through the metal section and thinking, wow, that looks like a really cool band. And so, I mean, Sai as, as a band and, and, and Mirai as a person, I mean, they're you know, the elite of Japanese black metal. Um, as far as their discography goes, like, I mean, I got to be honest, some of their more recent stuff is a little too proggy for me. But um, up to, uh, I think, the album that Pale Monument was on, um, you know, I think was was pretty solid, and so this is one of my you know preferred Psy songs. Black Line Fever, Godspeed, Psy, Pale Monument. There you go.
Now, I'm starting to see kind of like a, a trend. Before you, in my previous two episodes, I think, we played Funeral Sutra songs. And the last episode, uh, Rich requested Cataplexy, and again, you got Cataplexy here. Well, upcoming, we got Sobbed, and we got Cataplexy. While we're talking about Cataplexy, why did you choose Cataplexy? You know, they were introduced to me by our drummer. Uh, he had visited me back in Canada about, I don't know, six years ago, and we were just talking about what he was listening to, and he was saying, oh, you know, there's this amazing black metal band from Osaka called Cataplexy, and uh, he played me some, and I was just blown away, and I, so I bought it, and it's just, you know, they're just solid, reliable black metal, and, you know, everything they do, they just execute it really, really, really well. They're, they're not pushing the envelope, but what they do, it's uh, it's consistent, and it's, it's pretty badass, so... If you're you know asking to select great bands of Japanese underground metal, I think Cataplexy have to be on the list. I think we're gonna have to get them on the show, huh? All right, and sobbed. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, sobbed. sobbed or, yeah, you know I, I can't remember if we, we played a show with them once or if I saw them, but I just remember watching them play. I remember the, the singer was wearing this just gnarly old Brujeria shirt with the cover of Matando Gueros on it. And uh, they, they just seemed like this really, really gnarly, <laughs> hard, brutal band. And uh, this, sorry, the music that they play is not depressive music per se, but there was something about the way that they played <laughs> and the demeanor on stage that was just really depressing, but in a good way. <laughs> and so I just thought it'd be good to put on the list because I think, again, you know, they're not pushing the envelope, but what they do is just executed really. Really, really well. I was, a lot of uh, sincerity. Uh, I was happily slashing my wrists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got sob, meaning of life, which I don't know. I haven't heard it yet. But it sounds like it's going to be a little bit of a, a slow one. It's not. It's brutal grindcore, but it's just something about it. Just uh, I don't know. It just comes at the heartstrings, I guess. All right. Cool. And then we got Cataplexy, Under the Moonlight of Sorrow. You guys have heard it before. This is a good band.
just heard Sob, meaning of life, and cataplexy under the moonlight of sorrow. Man, I've known you guys for quite a while. What brought you to Japan? Me? Um, well, I, uh, I finished a degree in uh, university in South Australia. Um, I, it was, I studied um, a product design course, and I sort of I wanted to get into design in Japan. Um, you know, I'm from a pretty um, small city in Australia, and there wasn't a lot of opportunities for me there. So, uh, you know, I packed my bags and came over here, um, you know, in the search of doing um, design work. And, you know, on top of that, I was sort of, at the time, I was quite in love with uh, a lot of the Japanese, like hardcore bands at that point in time. So, you know, I kind of had this dream of coming over and, you know, starting bands and, you um, getting into music over here and, you know, soon after I arrived, I was able to, uh, um, you know, meet Paul and, uh, you know, we kind of started playing music and writing music together and that was sort of, uh, that was a big thing for me, you know, that was, was a really important sort of stepping stone and sort of a decision maker on, you know, being here and living here and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's why I came. And uh, I guess why I'm still here a bit as well. <laughs> yeah, and for me, I mean, I, I initially got interested uh, in Japan back in uh, university days. Uh, and I actually came here on an exchange. And I initially fell in love with Japan because I was very interested in martial arts, I guess, as a lot of non-Japanese people are. Um, and then through that, you know, I just kind of deepened my my interest and, and love for the country and uh Ended up staying here to work and uh, went back to Canada for a few years. I basically came back here a few years ago on a one-way ticket and uh, planned to stay in Japan kind of for, you know, the next 20 years. It's, it's a great place to live. You know, uh, a question that, you know, I, I, I've known you for a while and I've never really asked you this. How'd you guys meet? <laughs> It's, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I put an ad in uh, Metropolis magazine, I think, back in 2002, you know, saying I was looking to start a band. That, you know, I listed the bands I was really into at that time, which was probably, like, in tune. I probably listed in tune, like, three times because I just yeah. loved them to yeah. the end. But then also, I probably, like I said, Burzum and Tragedy and His Hero is Gone. Yeah. Uh, and I just basically found my soulmate with that list of bands. <laughs> no, it was pretty, uh, um, yeah, I remember seeing the ad and it was, you know, there wasn't many ads, you know, in the Metropolis advertising for bands like that. And it was quite specific. So, so you know, connecting with uh, with Paul back then was, uh, was really good. You know, we sort of were able to, you know, start writing together and, um, you know, I was obviously more from a hardcore, um, you know, side of things and Paul was more metal and back in those days it was kind of the mix between the hardcore and the metal, like Paul was playing me things that I'd never heard and I was playing him things that he'd never heard and, you know, it sort of, the wheels uh, started in motion really quickly and we started writing really, really fast and, you know, what we produced was uh, was good stuff you know, and still proud of it. And, you know, that's sort of, uh, um, I guess, how we met. <laughs> that's good, man. That's, that's, that's a good answer for an interview like this, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right, so coming up, we got Goalhammer, Crucifixion. I might be mispronouncing that. Uh, we got FID, Smudge, and Finite Dark Water. Why'd you choose this? Um, you know, the fact that they're two all, all female bands is actually just a complete coincidence. I only kind of realized that when I looked at the list right now. Just realizing um, that now, yeah. You, you know, Gallhammer, actually, I, I met the singer once. There was a, a Peter Best photo exhibition in Tokyo years ago. And uh, interestingly, uh, Nocturnal Coco from Dark Throne had come over to sort of be the DJ. I guess she had came to see that and I just ended up talking to her randomly and she said that Golan were playing a show the next day at some bar in Shinjuku. So I went and checked 
them out and they just had this kind of like dirty like hellhammer like old hellhammer apocalyptic raids type vibe which was just really cool and they've just got this kind of dark you know gloomy crusty sound and uh so i just, I like what they do so I, there's not a lot of bands that play like that in, in japan so i put, put them on the list and then uh fid we've played with a couple of times and uh any they're just they're super cool people they're just really friendly really fun people and uh they just play wicked grind or uh and the singer's a phenomenal visual artist as well if you see any of their albums and look at the artwork that she does it's really really cool so uh, they're just a band that I think we respect musically and as people too, just from having interacted with them at shows. So just wanted to put them on the list. I agree with that, man. You know, there's not a lot of bands that are, not a lot of Japanese bands that are popular overseas that I think are as popular in Japan. But mm. FID is kind of one of those bands, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I quite like every member of that band. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they are really, really nice people. And, you know, as Paul said, I think, I think it's been twice we played with them. I think once was just the studio in, uh, studio show, right? Back in, yeah. um, Megaro. Megaro or something like that. And then yeah. we played, um, you know, just last week with, uh, with those guys in, um, you know, Storm, which was a great show as well. <laughs> I remember that as well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> With you as well. Yeah. You were there too. <laughs> yeah. That was a good night. I, I lost my voice, you know. So, yeah. Um, so, we got Gallhammer, followed up by FID.
way is through our Facebook um, mm-hmm. and then through there you can uh, also find our email um, yeah that's probably the easiest way alright so visual justice films if you want to contact us and get a hold of a band you like request a band you like request a song you like Thanks. ask for an interview visual justice films at gmail.com now unnamed <laughs> kinda Singer, guitarist for a funeral sutra. Uh, what's the next two songs we got? Yeah, so uh, we wanted to put forward an artist that both of us really like, which is uh, the Japanese kind of folk singer songwriter named Kan Mikami. We actually met him for uh, Minoru, who was running a club called Koyo M7, who now runs Koyo Bush Ash had booked Mikami Khan to play at this, uh, this hardcore show. And so, you know, imagine the venue, you got a room full of hardcore kids, and all of a sudden this probably 60 to 65-year-old Japanese dude just walks out with a t- wear, wear a black T-shirt with an acoustic and just bangs through this set of, like, the most intense, emotional folk music I'd ever heard, and the whole room was just transfixed. Uh, and I ended up, you know, talking to him after, and uh, just hearing about his career and his background, and just a phenomenal guy, a phenomenal artist. And so you know, I picked up a bunch of his albums, and, you know, living in Japan and just walking around listening to his songs and looking at the streets and the buildings and the trains and things like that, it's a really magical feeling. So I, uh, I would highly recommend to people uh, who lovers of music, whether metal or not, to check out uh, any of uh, the stuff by Khan Mikami. And so the, the, the first song is uh, which is more of uh, kind of an upbeat, more of a rocky song. Uh, and then the second song is Shoulben uh, no Mizumi, which is translated as a lake full of piss. And it's a little bit more of a softer song. But I think just, you know, from the title, you can get a sense of the types of songs that he writes. Yeah, you know, this coming from a Japanese Oyaji, this sounds like it's going to be pretty good. <laughs> All right, once again, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for showing up tonight. You did a great job. Hey, it's our pleasure, man. Thanks for everything you do supporting the scene and, you know, you know kind of small independent band like us. So it's a pleasure for us to, to talk to you. Anytime. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it, Mark. Thanks, mate. No problem, guys. You guys have a good night, all right? Alrighty. Alright, here we go. We got Kai McCombie finishing up the night. Shilo, 
何でもいいからさらけ出せ花を捧げよう。そして語ろう。どぶろく小話流す涙持ちの涙だから。「何でもいいからぶち壊せ」「何でもいいからさらけ出せ」風が吹くと思い出すから人間だらけの東京に恨みの花を咲かせよう「そして走ろう」「地獄の果てまでこの地に生まれりゃ神様よだから」だから何でもいいからぶち壊せ何でもいいからさらけ出せ